If I could just pull a subject on the day, and I thought I wanted to take the text and just pull a subject out of all of that scripture from verse 1 through 5. I want to key in on the third verse. And the third verse reads, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. And I'll take verse 4 also. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. Now if I would just take that scripture, those two scriptures on this afternoon, and put a tag or put a subject on it this afternoon, the subject is, where do you fare? Touch two or three people and ask them, where do you fare? Yeah, where do you fail? Where do you fail? Where do you fail? Where do you fail? Or let's 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 let's, let's do it a different way. Let's do it for that. War fail. Where do you fail? In the Bible, Paul is talking to the church in Corinthians. He said, now Paul, I beg you, my brother, in all meekness and the gentleness of Christ that you present among yourself, but being absent that I am bold towards you. I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with the confidence wherein that I speak bold against some which think of us as if we walk according to the flesh. Paul is in there, he's letting us know that sometimes when you become a Christian, when you get saved, you, you go to church, you're going to have to be bold outside of these four walls. This is not just a thing that you can keep inside of these four consecrated walls. Sometimes people are going to get mad at you. You ain't going to talk to me. Sometimes people are going to talk about you. Sometimes people are going to throw their nose up in the air at you. Because you claim to be one of Christ's set-apart people. Sometimes people are gonna, can't understand you because they're always going to try to put you back where you came from. And y'all ain't going to talk to me. Can I talk about myself? Or when, I, when I first started preaching, they, my, they, they knew the old job. So then why is this boy on the pulpit preaching now? Wasn't this the same God that was in the club last week? Wasn't this the same child smoking dope? Y'all ain't going to talk to me. But you can't war 
in the flesh. Amen. I got a call on Friday morning. I called my mom. And it kind of gave me this sermon that I'm preaching right now. Because I was going to preach something different. And I said, uh, good morning. And I usually call them around 5 o'clock in the morning because that's when they're up. So it's 12 o'clock German time. And I said, Mom, I said, did you get the box that I held? And she said, yes, sir, I got the box. And then she said, I haven't heard from you for two or three weeks. And I said, I've been training to go to school. And you know, like a mother was like, son, what school are you? You already don't jump out of helicopters. You already don't jump out of airplanes. What school are you training to go to now? I said, well, they approached me when I was out in Iraq, and they wanted me to go to Sapper School. And if you don't know what Sapper School is, Sapper School is like a school where they train engineers to be commandos. And the first thing that came out of her mouth, she was like, how is a bishop supposed to go to a school where they train the commandos? That's against the word of God. So immediately, you understand what I'm saying? My mom knowing me and thinks she can give me direction, I had to take her to the word. And I said, uh, why can't I go? I said, if anybody needs to go to the school to learn how to fight, it's me. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Because Christians really don't realize when you come in these four consecrated walls and God brings you from the old into the new, you just stuck in the new fight. Y'all ain't gonna cross a little bit of the some of you that before you were saved, you had fight with finances. You had fight with a girlfriend or boyfriend, you had a fight with a husband or wife, you had fight on your job. But when you came in and you decided to be saved, and Jesus Christ reached down in the look of the mark and pulled you out of darkness into the marvelous light, all the fights that known the man, you were involved in that. So who better to teach? how to fight than Christians. So I began to go through the scriptures and I said, explain this. I said, warfare, and I said, I always have to take people to definition. Warfare refers to the conduct of conflict between two opponents. And usually involves an escalation or an aggression, uh, aggression from a proverbial, a proverbial standpoint. And the proverbial standpoint that we use in this dimension is words. Between two politicians and, or diplomats to full scale armed conflict. Everybody understand what I'm saying? And it waged, it war is waged until one side accepts defeat or one side accepts the peace terms agreed upon. Let me clean this up here. When you decided to walk in church, and I'm not just saying this church, I'm talking about any church, and you have made up mind to be saved, and you walked down to the altar, and you did the uh, 10, the Romans 10 and 9, 9 and 10, whichever you wanted there, and you decided to confess in your heart, with your heart, to believe in your heart, that Jesus Christ was love. You just enlisted in a war. Mm -hmm. You in the war. Amen. So it don't make a difference whether uh, you were soldier by trade or you were soldier. You were soldier anyway. And the problem with the church is they don't understand some of you are soldiers and they don't even know. Why? 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 Why did I say this? It is in the war is waged between politicians or them diplomats. On a strategic level, let me break some things. War is fought on two levels. Strategic, that's the planning level. Operation, that's the way the strategic level goes down to what you, uh, what, what's planned and strategic is done at an operational level. And the problem is, God strategically placed you in church to save you. But he didn't tell you that when he saved you, it was going to be, a, that you was enlisted into a war. And the problem with most saints, or most young Christians, they get saved, they come to church, and they expect their whole life to be a bit of roses. Yeah. Because I had a, a God, because I got saved, I had bad credit, I'm supposed to walk down the ages and buy a brand new car. The devil is a lie. Yeah. My marriage was messed up and tore up before I came into church, and guess what? Once I'm saved, you're supposed to make my marriage right. No, the devil is a lie. I didn't have money before I came into the church.
They didn't read the instruction manual or the strategic manual, which is the Bible that allows us to learn how to fight the war. They See, they they want the instruction manual on how to fight the war. And then you get mad at the preacher, you get mad at the bishop, you get mad at the 